everybody, welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. Today we're gonna convert some linear equations from standard form to slope intercept form. So this is standard form, A, B, and C are just constants. And this is slope intercept form, M and B are constants, but M is our slope and B is our Y intercept, right? That's why it's called slope intercept form. So we're converting from standard to slope intercept form. So how do we do this? We just solve for y, because look here, we have y equals mx plus b. y is isolated, it's by itself on one side of the equal sign. So that's exactly how we go from standard to slope intercept, is we just solve for this y. So looking at this example, the first thing we do is we can easily just subtract 4x from both sides. And that won't get us y, but that'll get us 2y, and that's close, right? So that's the first thing I'm gonna do is subtract. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm skipping a step on y'all. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 4x from both sides. Minus 4x, minus 4x. So now where am I at? I have 2y equals negative 4x plus 7. And you could have wrote 7 minus 4x. That's the same thing. But I'm trying to make it look like this, remember? And now I'm very close. All I need to do is one more thing, which is what? Divide by 2. Right, 2 is being multiplied to y, so to get y by itself, I just divide. I can reverse that multiplication or cancel it, however you want to think of it. Right, 2 divided by 2 is 1. So I'm left with y equals, and I divide this whole side by 2, which means I divide each term by 2. So negative 4x over 2 is just negative 2x, and this is plus 7 over 2. So I have converted from standard form to slope intercept form. And just in particular about this line is we have a slope of negative two and a y intercept of seven over two. So that's good to note. All right, one more example. And by the way, there are multiple different ways you can do these. There's different orders you can go in. Even that last problem I just did, you could have done it in a slightly different order, but you should always get to the same answer. So just keep that in mind. You could, for example, for this, you could add a 5y to both sides because you could say, oh, well, I want my coefficient to be positive. So I'll add the y over here and I'll subtract the 10 over here and I'll do that. Or you could subtract 3x from both sides and then just end up dividing my negative 5. And that's what I would personally do. So I'm going to subtract the 3x from both sides. And I'm left with negative 5y equals negative 3x plus 10. And now look, how can I get y by itself? I can divide by negative five. So I just have to be careful with my sign. That's all I have to do is be careful with my sign. So negative five divided by negative five, that gives me one. So I'm left with y. What am I left with here? Negative three x over negative five. Remember, both of these get divided by negative five. Negative three x over negative five, that's positive three fifths, right? And negative divided by a negative plus 10 over negative five. Now it's a positive divided by a negative, that's a negative. So minus, and 10 over five is two, bam, so that's it. So again, it's the same process every time, just try to isolate y, solve for y by adding, subtracting, dividing, all those things. So get some practice. If you have any questions, leave them below, hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoyed, and keep flexing those brain muscles, keep making those brain gains. See you in the next video.